My name is Danny Hopkins and I'm editor of Practical Classics magazine and I'm here at Historit at Vista Heritage with a Daimler SP250 or Dart as it was called until Dodge decided that they didn't want the Daimler company to use the name anymore. As you can probably tell, aesthetically it's a bit of an acquired taste but please don't let that put you off because the Daimler SP250 is a fantastic British sports car. It's distinctive, it's super rare, they only made 2,645 of them and there's a fanatical following in the car clubs so just about everything that you need to make one of these cars go and keep on the road is available. It's a bit difficult for me to show you around the car in terms of what to look for in bodywork because most of the car is made out of glass fibre resin, really thick glass fibre resin because it was one of the earliest applications of it. But I'll show you around, I'll give you some tips on how to buy one of these beautiful cars and then we'll take it for a drive because as with most British sports cars, that's where it's at. Checking the glass fibre uh, body is, is quite important. One of the biggest problems with glass fibre is putting paint over it. Often it's not done correctly or if there's any moisture in the air when the paint's done, it'll show up in little blisters all over. Also, you can check really carefully for um, crazing in the gel coat, which is the top surface coat of the, of, of the finish here. If you see that, it might just be through slight stress. It could be to do with age. It could also be to do with having had an accident at some point and being badly repaired. It's all easily solvable and there are specialists out there that can help you do it. Um, while we're at the front, it's really important to check that uh, the trunnions and the vertical links have been greased really carefully. Uh, trunnions are easily replaceable, but vertical links are super rare and super expensive. It's really important to get these cars up in the air so that you can actually have a look at the ladder chassis underneath because if they are going to rust, that's where they're going to rust. And if you do need to replace the chassis, that's a really big and involved job. It'll, it'll cost you a lot of money. It could be a serious negotiation point. Okay, one thing that it might be worth checking is that the whole of the front of the car is, is held onto the chassis and sometimes when those mounting points get weak or corrode somewhat, it can actually mean that the, the bonnet latch uh, is dislodged and at speed the bonnet can flip up. So check that there's no crazing around the bonnet mounts. Uh, and also the club offers a very simple latching device which is only £20. If that's fitted to the car, it's probably proof that it's been looked after really well. Check underneath at the back of the car. There are three cross members. There's one big thick one, which is just around the area of the back axle, and there's two further back. Those two are very prone to rusting. It's probably a good indication of the condition of the rest of the chassis if you can check the rear cross member and see whether that's corroded or not. While you're there, check the back axle itself, particularly on A series cars, because they were divided into A, B, and C. A spec cars had a very light, um, chassis comparatively when a Jaguar bought Daimler in 1960 uh, the B-spec cars came along and they have a significantly uh, strengthened chassis that's been braced so that uh, the doors don't fly open when the cars go around corners now some A-spec cars in fact quite a few of them have had the upgrade they've had the extra bracing put in uh, C-spec cars have got extra instrumentation and, and some extra features too so try and get up in the air I can't emphasize that enough if you get up in the air and everything looks okay then, then you're onto a winner Otherwise, you can really negotiate strongly because the labour involved to take the body off this chassis, there are 50 bolts holding the body onto the chassis. Most of them will be seized if it's old. Um, that could be quite a significant expenditure for you. This is the beating heart of the SP250. It is the Edward Turner designed 2.5 litre Hemi V8 and it is a corker, a cracking engine. Many believe it to be the greatest V8 ever made. Certainly drag racers in the 1960s loved it. There are stories of this engine with a different inlet manifold and a different carburetor producing in excess of a thousand brake horsepower and that's without serious modification to the bottom end. So it's a really strong engine. It will last you as long as you look after it. But because it's got alloy heads and an iron block, you've got to make sure that the water and antifreeze solution mix is correct. Otherwise, if it isn't, you'll have head gasket problems. It'll start to disintegrate from the inside. But as long as it's been looked after, it will last as long as a car. And it's the reason to own the car, really. I mean, if you think about it, what you've got here is a seriously distinctive, super rare British sports car with a heavy V8 under the bonnet. I mean, what's not to like? Okay, so here we are in the SP250. The Daimler Dart. I'm about to show you what makes it such a fantastic car. It's all about the drive, baby. And this thing drives beautifully. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, it's a match for a, an Austin Healey 3000. It feels light and nimble. 
steering is quite heavy, but the car itself, with that big V8 up the front, once you're on the move, it feels great. It's got a real urge about it. It pulls right the way through the rev range. And that noise is difficult to beat it. Wow! It's a great thing. It's a real shame they made so few of these cars, but what it does do is it does make it exclusive in the way that the E-Type just isn't. I think there's something very Flash Gordon about them, something almost, it's like an Art Deco sculpture on wheels. Great fun there, listen to that. Oh yeah. It's hairy chested. It's as British as you like, even though it does look kind of eccentric. I can live with that noise any day of the week. And this is a fabulous alternative to an Austin Healy or an E-Type. Listen to that. 